Yeah, well, you let us know. I'll be out again as soon as I can, but probably not till tonight. Right, that settles it. Oh, look. Okay, take care of yourself. Yeah, goodbye. Still no word from Dee? No. Roger and Bobby are out there in the park looking for her. I just came back from there myself. So far, there's no sign of her. Are there any leads? Well, the, the police are just as baffled as we are. They don't think it's a kidnapping, and Joe swears to me that it has nothing to do with the situation in Brooklyn, so I guess we have to accept that. Yeah. Well, so far, the only thing that makes any sense is that Dee's disappearance seems to have something to do with that gorilla of hers. Now, what kind of sense does that make? This gorilla's still on the loose. I mean, nobody's seen him. There's a thousand places where he could be hiding. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. You see, last night, Roger spoke to uh, Oren Douglas, or Owen Douglas, that keeper that used to be the gorilla's keeper, but he's not there anymore. He says he can't be sure he hasn't been there for a while, but from the way Roger described things, he seems there's a very good chance that Dee and the gorilla may be involved in some way. I mean, it's really weird to me. The, every minute the gorilla's on the loose, he gets more dangerous. There's a new uh, primate keeper coming in today. Maybe he can be some help. Well, how's Jono handling all this? Oh, well, he's used to not having his mother around, but he's beginning to catch wind that something's up. I better have a talk with him when he gets home from school today. Which reminds me that Mr. Mulcahy over there has got some new pictures of his grandchildren he wants me to look at, and I can't put it off anymore. Go on. You probably owe him anyway. Besides, you don't want to offend your best customer, right? Yeah, I suppose so. You look after the bar. Sure. Hi, sweetheart. Hi. Hi. What's up? You look a little, uh, a little, I don't know. I just went to see Seneca. Well, I guess that'll do it. What, did he give you a hard time? No. It happened. He agreed to give me the divorce. I can't believe it! <laughs> you're not joking. You're, you're not joking at me now, Jillian. You're not getting back, in, back, getting back at me for not filing out my petty cash statement, Jillian. That would be very cruel. Uh, it's real. Finally. How did you do it? I don't know. It wasn't all that difficult. He was actually rather nice about it. I laid out all the alternatives, held my temper, and I suppose finally he realized he didn't have any choice. <laughs> You're amazing. <laughs> what do we do next? Uh, you <laughs> have to fly down to the Dominican Republic tomorrow. I'll cover for you at the office. No, hell, we'll close the office. I'll go with you. It'll only take a day, and we can come back. We can get married next week. Where do you want to go on your honeymoon? No, we no, can Frank, go to wait, a... wait a minute, wait a minute, please. I don't want to do it like that. I would prefer a New York State divorce. And it's not going to be any problem. I told Senek uh, he could sue me for uh, mental cruelty. He agreed. Julian, that doesn't make any sense. What? Why go through all that trouble? That'll take months if we do it that way. Three months, at the most. Three months minimum. Frank, we have waited this long. A little more time is not going to make a difference. But there's no reason. Well, I think there is. Well, I wish the hell you'd explain it to me. Well, I, I want to marry you. And I'm going to. It is happening. <laughs> but I want it to be everything that it should be, not some quick ceremony in, in, in City Hall. Frank, I want to save her. And I want the family to throw us a party. <laughs> hey, anyway, we need a new toaster. We can still have all that. I'll buy you a new toaster. I'll even buy you a new blender. How about that? Frank! Jill, what is it? I don't... This is everything that we've wanted. I mean, you, you don't even seem excited. Of course I am excited. I just haven't let it sink in yet, that's all. Honey, sit, sit down. Oh. Look, 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 it's real. It's real, it's now. There's no problems. Nothing is in our way. I don't want to wait. We've waited too long. Besides, by waiting, we're taking a chance that something will go wrong. Sure, Seneca said yes today, but by tomorrow, he could change his mind. But he won't. He wants this divorce just as much as I do. I mean, he may not know it, but that's true. He is involved with Kimberly. Now, that's where his life is now. Good afternoon. Hello. Oh, you're in a lovely mood. What's wrong? Plenty.
Would you care to be a bit more specific? It's Jill Coleridge. I hate her. And who said we had nothing in common? What brought this on? I went to see Seneca before. She was there. So I did a little eavesdropping. She was in there telling, fr telling Seneca how wrong I was for her. Who the hell does she think she is? Well, much though I do hate to agree with Jillian... Don't Col you dare! Don't. Actually, I have a little bit of bad news for you, Mother. Seneca is going to give Jill that divorce. You realize, of course, that this will mean that Jill is free to marry Frank. Yes? Does that bother you? I suppose it was inevitable. But you don't like it much, do you? Well, at least she won't be using those pictures of you and she won't be dragging you through court. That's what I like about you. You always look on the positive side. You know, I do that too. For instance, one of the results of this divorce is that Seneca is going to be free to marry me. Once I convince him. Would that make you happy? I mean, it's going to be a lot more respectable and we won't embarrass you anymore. Now, you know very well that that is not the issue. In fact, I don't really give a damn what anybody thinks. I'm concerned about you, believe it or not. Marriage to Seneca would be a disaster. And I have pointed out to you the problems over and over again. Yes, you have. And I'd appreciate it if you'd spare me one more time. You're just like her mother. You're just like Jill. You and Jill think you know everything. You are going to tell me what's good for me? Well, you can't, because you're wrong. I don't know why Seneca even gave her the time of day. Maybe he's still somewhat fond of her. Considered that? Ah, yes, yes, I see you have. What is the big fascination with Jill? I mean, she's beautiful, so what? I can't believe that he ever even got involved with her. He couldn't have been in love with her. Oh, but he was. Very deeply. And for a long time. In fact, if Seneca had his way, he and Jill would still be together. I don't believe you. Well, I'm sure you don't, but it is the truth. He was devoted to her and the baby. Come on. What are you talking about? I know they don't have any children. They did. The little boy died. When? A year ago, he was almost two years old. Didn't Seneca tell you? No. My, my. Actually, Edmund wasn't Seneca's son. He was Frank's. There was some question about the child's paternity at birth, and everybody thought he was Seneca's, including Jillian. Well, how did they find out? Shortly after the baby was born, Seneca ran a blood test. He knew about it for almost a year before he told her. Why? He wanted a child very much. He always had. I assume he still does. And that's the kind of man he is, love. He did anything he could to make it a reality. It was his chance, and he wasn't going to give it up, no matter what. I see. I suppose that's one of the main reasons he was so willing to uh, help me with you last fall. It certainly does explain a great deal of his feeling for you right now. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, Mother. What were you saying? Where were you just now? Just thinking. I've never heard that before. It's very interesting. <laughs> Michael, you're late. Yeah, I was on my way out, and George asked me to unpack some cartons. I'm sorry. How is George? He's still pretty weak. Should be more careful next time. Have they been watching you? No, I don't. Why, have you heard something? Hey, relax. I was just asking. I'm sure you're OK. You've been doing a good job, Michael. Thanks. Everybody's very impressed. Wally wants you to know once we're finished with this business, he can probably find some room for you in the organization. You promised to get me out of here, me and my mother. Now, we made a deal. And we'll keep it. You know, for a young kid, you sure worry an awful lot. I just want to make sure. You'll be taken care of. I didn't mean you have to keep working with us here. 
got connections all over. Any way you think about it. What have you got for me? Just what I told you last night. You sure it was Joe's wife who got Tiso out of the room? I'm sure. The old man told me himself. He said she saved my life. Huh. Kind of red hair, about 5'5"? Five five. Yeah, that's her. OK. So far, we're playing fair. Standard rules, wives and kids off limits. But she's taking herself out of that. If she's in it, she's in it all the way. What do you mean? I think this may be just the thing we're looking for. You two wait in here. I'll get the mug books. You uh, sure you don't want to tell me what it's all about? I'm following a possible lead. Reporters. He probably thinks I want to steal his story. Fanelli, come on. Everyone knows Knox can't write. Now, who you after? Look, uh, if I come across anything, Vic, I promise you first crack at it, OK? Now, will you get me the damn books? <laughs> This place gives me the creeps. Boy, I've never been in a police department. Not in New York, anyway. I mean, the ones in Seattle, they were, well, they were. What are we doing here? I mean, I know why we came, but what's this really all about? I think we both know the answer to that. I think we're exploring the possibility that Mary's dead. It wasn't an accident after all. You really think... I don't know. There have been too many questions for too long. None of us knows much about what happened that day, and what we do know doesn't add up. There are facts, but how to put them together, what they mean... Okay. Let's look at the facts. Now, they found Mary's car no, no, out no, there. No, no, no. Start from the beginning. Take from the top. I left the apartment that morning. Mary was upset, but she told me she'd be okay. Just give her a little bit of time. She'd meet me uptown in an hour. She didn't show. Nobody knew where she was. Until she called the apartment, and Daddy said that she told him she was on her way and not to start the wedding without her. Yeah, but we don't know where she called from. The next thing we heard, there was an accident. Before she died, Mary said two things to me. Man in the green hat that she loved. And she was gone. Now we know that on her way to the wedding, she stopped in at that coffee house where we went with Kim. Yeah. And we know that the last time we were all there together, there was also a guy there who was probably a drug dealer who was wearing a green leather cap. Now, that's all we know for sure. But if that guy was there the morning of the wedding and Mary saw him, remembered it's a good bet that she would follow him and if he found out you might have yeah okay Whew. you know maybe i don't want to believe this maybe i uh it would all make sense except for one thing that witness, the guy who said that he saw Mary later that day. Oh, Hirsch, yeah, I know. If she did see the guy in the green hat in the morning, and if she did follow him, there's no way that she would have stopped to talk to that guy later in the day. That's right. That's what I've been trying to figure out. Hirsch said that Mary was upset because what happened between you and me. Now, there was no way he could know that unless... Unless he talked to her himself. See? It just doesn't make sense. None of it does. Never did. We're going to find out. Oh, Jack. I'm OK. Yeah. Narcotics arrests and convictions. This will keep you busy for a while. Thanks, Phil. Okay. You sure that you're going to remember who this guy was? Yeah. I mean, you only saw him one time. I remember. Look, uh, this is going to take some time. There's, there's no point in you hanging around. Well, I'm going to stay. Thanks. Don't. I'm, I'm involved in this like you are. So tell me what you know about her, Joe's wife. What's her name again? Siobhan. Right. What's the story with them? Well, I don't know too much. They got married a couple of months ago. Joe's crazy about her. He'd have to be marrying an outsider like that. They always just hang around the restaurant. Uh, uh, she and Tizo seem pretty close. 
he's always talking about what a great wife she is and, and how much he likes having her in the family. She's gonna have a baby. Better and better. What else? That's it. Joe's still living at the old apartment? Yeah, except Siobhan isn't there anymore. You know, after that thing with the car, he decided it was too dangerous for her out in Brooklyn, so she's staying with her parents. Where's that? Manhattan. They have a, an apartment over their bar. Well, we made the first hit. Yeah. You've really been keeping your eyes open. I told you, kid, you do good work. You ready for some more? I guess so. I want you to make an excuse to go up there, to place over the bar. You think you can handle that? Sure. Uh, I'll have to come up with something legitimate so they don't get suspicious. Yeah, I can do it. I know you can. Why don't you get in? Look the place over. The layout of the rooms, entrances, stairways. Memorize it as best you can. OK, as soon as I come up with an excuse. Good. What are you going to do? Uh, I'm still working on it. Let's just say I have some plans for Mrs. Novak. Thanks for showing me the pictures of the kids. They're adorable. <laughs> of course, they don't hold a candle to any of my grandchildren. And not that you're prejudiced or anything. Just call it the way it is. What was going on here before? When? You know what I mean. From the way you were carrying on, I gather it's good news. Well, you might say so, yeah. Well, well. Senator agreed to give me a divorce. Oh, sweetheart, that's fantastic. <laughs> ah, congratulations Thanks. to both of you. <laughs> Thanks. Well, how'd you get him to change his mind? Well. But never mind about that. The important thing now is you got to see Mac. you got to make plans. When's it going to be? I assume I'll be invited, of course. Well, there's a difference of opinion about that. Well, You're I'm... invited, of course. I meant about when we have the <laughs> wedding. It's going to be a soon as possible, right? <laughs> that's what I say. OK, OK, maybe I'm being overly cautious, but I would just like things to go smoothly. Any reason to think they won't? No. It could. A Dominican divorce is perfectly legal. It's fully recognized as long as both parties are in agreement. Well, there is a chance that it could be faulted. I don't want that hanging over our heads. Just cite me one precedent where that's happened. There are some. Name them. Uh, <laughs> you can't, okay. see? All right, I'll look it up tonight. <laughs> Frank. We have an opportunity to get the best possible divorce. Going through the state court, it's final once and for all. Now, Seneca has promised a couple more weeks is not going to make a difference. They do if there's no reason, Jill. But Seneca agreed? Oh, yeah. hi. Yeah. <laughs> for now. But if we go through the New York court system, we're going, we're going giving him time to change his mind. Well, why do you do that? I mean, why don't you go to Mexico or somewhere? Now, that's what I like to hear. See that from your own family, too. Oh, I agree with Jillian. Well, thanks uh -huh. a lot, Da. Well, you don't want anything coming up later that could spoil it for yeah. you. And use your influence. Get the date moved up in the courts. Yeah, of course you could do that. Ask Seneca to file the petition. It goes on calendar, and then it's just a matter of time. Yeah, We've got that. I'm not going anywhere. Is it really that important to you? Yeah. All right, all right. But I am telling you, I am going to call in every marker I have on this one. It's going to be the quickest divorce on New York record. That is fine with me. And I say we all have a drink of my best Irish oh. to celebrate. Bring huh? it on. Oh, I could use it. I was out in the park with Roger. It's freezing. Mm. Uh, have any luck yet? No, there's no sign of Dee or her friend, Prince Albert. Mm. You know, I'm not so sure this isn't another sympathy act like the good old days. Mm. Although I've never seen Roger this upset. And I didn't know what to say to him. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't wait for the toast. <laughs> well, I needed this. I, like I said, I was. Cold. All right, there's plenty more where that came from. To Jillian and Frank. The brightest of futures, and a marriage that's untroubled, full of joy as you deserve. Ah, thank you. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Stand clinic, may I help you? Hello. I wanted some information about a pregnancy test. I need it done right away. Is that possible? Yes, we're open till six. You'd have the results tomorrow. Oh, that's terrific. 
Would they let me know in writing? I'm concerned because I know how hard those things are to read sometimes, and <laughs> I guess I'm not very bright. It's a very simple report. You'll get a single sheet of paper with a check marked in the appropriate box indicating whether the results were positive or negative. I think I can handle that. It sounds just fine. I'll see you in a little while. Soapnet's Breakfast in Bed just got supersized. Now you can enjoy breakfast in bed all day with the OC, One Tree Hill, Beverly Hills 90210, and Gilmore Girls. Every Saturday and Sunday from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Soapnet.